Welcome, brothers and sisters. Oh, it's such a, an exciting day for us to be in the presence of God again. We have come to fellowship with the Almighty God, our Father, and our Lord and King, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in the presence of the Holy Spirit of God who is here with us our helper, our teacher, our counselor. To our God be all glory forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We have been talking on the redeemed of the Lord. The redeemed of the Lord. Those whom God through his son Jesus Christ have restored to the original fellowship and the blessings that God Almighty intended for mankind, which man lost through disobedience of Adam by the trickery of Satan, who tricked man into sin and sin pervades the world. Sin brings death. And Jesus Christ has come and has destroyed sin and has destroyed the devil and has restored us to that original place. And so today, we want to look at the kingdom of God that God has brought to mankind through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We want to take our central texts for today from Colossians 1.13. Colossians 1.13 and 14. Open to Colossians 1, 13 and 14, and let us read together. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Some translation use the word and translated us, instead of conveyed, carried us. So I'll take that reading again, and let's read it together again. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. He, God Almighty, emphasis mine, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. So redemption is only possible through Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We are talking about the kingdom of God. And we can see here that Verse 13 says we have been translated. It is past tense, conveyed. Look at your own Bible. It's not saying we will be conveyed. It's not saying we will be translated. It says this has already happened. It says he has delivered us, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us, which means has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Who are the people that have been conveyed? Who are the us here? The redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, according to Psalm 102, verse 7. You see, there is power in confession. That's why Psalm 102, verse 7, uh, Psalm 102, verse, Psalm 107, verse 2, rather, Psalm 107, verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has delivered from the power of the enemy. May I hear the redeemed of the Lord say so by saying, I have been redeemed and I have been conveyed into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the son of his love. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. The kingdom of God. What does it mean? Let us also look at quickly Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, which is a very familiar one, verses 9 and 10. Before 
we look at quick definition of the kingdom, make a few points, and then we go into prayer. I say every other kingdom that has been reigning over your life and my life and our families with this knowledge and understanding of the redeemed of the law, that sin has been destroyed, that the devil has been defeated and destroyed by Jesus Christ, that we have been restored, therefore, by everlasting covenant. God is our father. We are his children. By covenant, God says he is our father and he remains our father forever. Hallelujah. And we have been redeemed, translated into the kingdom of God. That's where we belong. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. You know it. It is the popular scripture we call the Lord's Prayer. So let's take it together. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven. Our Father, we are in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Jesus was the one teaching the disciples to pray this prayer. At this point, Jesus was telling them, pray that the kingdom should come. And that when the kingdom of God comes, what will happen? His will will be done. Praise the name of the Lord. Just keep that. When the kingdom of God comes, what happens? The will of God is done, is established. And we will demonstrate this. So put these two scriptures together and ask yourself, then what does it mean? Let your kingdom come. What does it mean? The kingdom of God. At this point, let me make a statement around two interchangeable terms that you will hear in the scripture. You will hear the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. They are often used interchangeably to mean the same thing. Yes, sometimes they mean exactly the same thing but sometimes they mean a different thing. Praise the name of the Lord. So the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at kingdom. What does kingdom mean before we go into that differentiation? What does kingdom mean? Oh, glory be to Jesus. Kingdom means a territory that has a king who rules over it. Kingdom is a territory with a king who rules over it. Praise the name of the Lord. Kingdom is a territory with a king. And it can also be a queen, hallelujah, with a king or a queen who rules over it. Now, for a king to rule over a territory, it means that king has power over that territory. Listen to these three things that I'm going to explain now. And for the king to have power, it means that king has authority. For the king to have authority, that king must wield influence. So now let's define some things. You would see how they connect. What is power? Power is the ability to determine outcome. Some people will say simply, power is influence. So power is the ability to determine outcome, which is power is the ability to influence outcome. So you see where influence came from. The ability to influence outcome. And what is authority then? Authority is the 
right to exercise power. The right to exercise power. So, for example, the president of a country may exercise a lot of power. But that power is because he has been given the authority for a democratic system. They will have a constitution and they will have election. So the people will hand over the authority to that president. And the president is then given the right to exercise. That is the authority, the right to exercise power. And so when we say that Jesus has given us the authority, according to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus said, behold, I give you authority. Some translation says, I give you power to, 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 to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. That means Jesus has the power. He is the one who has the power over scorpions and serpents and the enemy, and he then has given us the right, that is the authority, to exercise power. Are you following? I think the easiest one people always relate with is a policewoman on the road. You see a traffic warden on the road or a police lady on the road, and the traffic warden raises her hand cars must stop. Any car that comes, even fellow police cars, will stop at that point in time. Why? Because he has been given the right to exercise that power. So she determines the outcome at that point by exercising the authority that has been given to her. By the authority that has been given to her, she exercises her right. And that demonstrates power, the ability to influence outcome. So when we say God has power, God is the ultimate power. It means God is the ultimate decider of anything and everything. Hallelujah. When we say Jesus has power, we are saying that Jesus has the authority, has the, the, the right, the ability, the ability rather has the ability to influence and determine outcome. Outside that, every other power is under authority. It's by the authority that they have. This is the only original power. Praise the name of the Lord. All power belongs to God. And God has said Jesus has all power over all creation of God because he has been lifted and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He has the authority, the power and dominion over all creations of God, creatures of God. And in his name, we have been given the authority. Now, you understand power, influence and authority let's go back to kingdom so we said that a kingdom is a territory a domain you can even split the two words king and dom that is king and domain king and domain queen and domain but let's use king at this point simply for the word kingdom but a kingdom can be ruled by a by a queen as well as a king. Now, key thing is that that territory is the king or the queen has power over that territory, exercises authority over that territory and gives authority over that territory. Whoever he gives authority over that territory, that person exercises the power of the king. Hallelujah. And power influences. Power is influence. So determines outcome. Determines the result. Amen. Glory be to God. I believe that is clear. So now when we say kingdom of God, then we are then saying that the territory, the domain, 
where God rules. Hallelujah. And so when we say kingdom of God, we are saying the domain, the territory where God rules. And God rules over all, isn't it? Praise the name of the Lord. Why God rules over all when it comes to this physical world? Because of the sin of Adam, by the law of servitude, the devil rules over sinners. John chapter 3, verse 8, you saw it there clearly when we read. He said, whoever sinned is of the devil because the devil sinned from the beginning. You also saw it in Acts chapter 19 where we were talking about the sons of Scyphus. And after Paul, they saw the great work that God was doing in the life of Paul and they decided and said to a demon possessed, by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. <laughs> oh, the demon said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you? You are under my domain. You are under my kingdom. Who are you to cast me out? And you know what the demons did to, the demon possessed, rather, did to that, the, the seven sons of Sceva tore them, beat them up, and they had to run helter-skelter. So, the scripture there in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says, we have been delivered from the power of darkness and conveyed to the kingdom, into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Beloved brothers and sisters, there are only two kingdoms that operate. Only two kingdoms exist. You see, in this physical, man thinks that, or human beings think they have a kingdom. They think there is a neutral place. No, there are only two kingdoms, as you have seen there. The kingdom of God, where Jesus Christ is the king, as you have seen there. We have been translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. The kingdom of God, where God reigns and has all authority and the kingdom of the devil, kingdom of Satan. So Jesus is the king of, the, of this kingdom of God. God has made it so, made him so. Satan, who rebelled against God, is the ruler of his own kingdom. He rules in his kingdom with his demons. And he rules over those who are sinners. Kingdom, as you now understand, is the territory, the domain in which a king reigns. So Satan is the king of his kingdom. The kingdom of Satan is the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of light. And there is so much blessing in that kingdom. Just like some countries, to use a physical illustration, that are doing very well. You would see people will leave countries that are poor and go to that country that is rich. And suddenly people who were struggling, they begin to do well because they are now in a country that is wealthy. But people who have even bigger, greater, better capacity, ability, in that kingdom that doesn't, that is poor, to remain poor. At best, they struggle to make ends meet. Such is the situation in the kingdom of God. So as the redeemed of the Lord, you and I belong to the kingdom of God. God Almighty reigns over us. Jesus is our king. Hallelujah. And he rules in the kingdom of God. Now, we have the power and the authority. We have been given the authority, rather, to exercise the power of God in the name of Jesus. In this kingdom, and this kingdom supersedes the kingdom of darkness. Do you understand now? So let's look at a few examples. 
to supersede while we are in the kingdom of God, where God rules over Jesus is the king, the power of God, the influence of God supersede all. And so the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verses 43 to 44, we'll see a clear illustration there, but let's look quickly at Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, let's look at verses 25 and 26. Glory be to God. Daniel chapter 4. 25. He said, they shall drive you, this was about Nebuchadnezzar, they shall drive you from men. Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass that, that seven years over you, till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he chooses the most high rule in the kingdom of men. Verse 26, and inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the storm and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after you come to know that heaven rules, heaven rules, heaven rules, God rules over all his creature. And Jesus has defeated the devil already. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at Luke as we now would begin to pray. Let's look at the book of Luke, chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Let's go there as we now begin to pray. Luke chapter 11. Let's start reading from verse 14. We'll read 14 to 22. He said, and he was casting out a demon, and it was, and it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. Now, you see a kingdom that was operating here. So the demon kept this man mute. Tied his tongue, he could not speak. And Jesus cast out that demon and the mute began to speak. Set him free. Delivered him from the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Any kingdom of darkness that is operating in your life, in my life, in anything that concerns us, today, right now, you are delivered from that darkness. You are delivered from that power. I terminate that power. We terminate that power in the name of Jesus. And so Jesus then used this to teach us the principle of the kingdom. So pay attention to this as we read now. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. 15, but some of them say, he casts out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons, that is by Satan, the king of the kingdom of darkness. Look at 16. Others testing him, sought from him a sign from heaven. And Jesus said, okay, let me teach you something. Verse 17. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. That's why when I see siblings fighting, quarreling, I say, don't they understand it is unity that brings strength. Every house divided against itself will fall. Satan knows. That's why those who go to Satan to deliver them from another Satan, they are putting themselves into a deeper trouble. Yes, it may look as though they have been delivered, but Satan has taken their souls into even a deeper depth. Because all the kingdoms that exist is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness. Jesus rules in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God has given him everything, every power, every authority, every uh, dominion, right, everything, preeminence to rule in that kingdom. And at the name of Jesus, every knee 
must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And we have been made kings and priests under him, Jesus, who is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the firstborn among many brethren. We are his brothers and sisters to rule with him, hallelujah, to enforce the kingdom of God in the earth. As Jesus said, we should pray, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. We are the ones whom Jesus will continue to use to enforce the kingdom of God. So we continue. Then he, he knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Belzebub. And if I cast out demons by Belzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. 20. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Did you see that? The kingdom of God has come upon you. So the kingdom of God came upon this mute man. Hallelujah. And the kingdom of Satan bowed because Power is the ability to influence outcome, to determine outcome. When the kingdom of God comes upon you, comes upon any situation, then the outcome is as God wants it to be. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Where? On the earth. In the earth. As it is in heaven, as has been determined in heaven. Glory be to God. Whatever God has determined concerning you and your household today by the kingdom of God that has come upon you, come upon me, come upon us, it shall come to manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall come to manifestation. Every other kingdom that has been operating in your life is a thief, is a robber. The devil is a liar and that kingdom must fall. In the name of Jesus, read with me, read with me as we go. Verse 20 again. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, everybody said the finger of God. That is the hand of God. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The dominion of God, the rulership of God, the territory, you have become part of the domain in which God reigns, God rules over. And in that domain, the devil cannot come in at all. At all, at all, at all. That's why you must remember the law of servitude. The devil will only play tricks to hold you, hold me. But he can do you nothing. Glory be to God. In John chapter 14, verse 30, you can look that up by yourself. Jesus said, the prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. That's the confession and the testimony of you and I, for we are his brothers. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness, the power of darkness, into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the son of his law. The kingdom of God has come upon us. In the name of Jesus. 21 and 22, we'll stop there. But please let me read back from 20, so I flow into 21 and 22. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. 21, when a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in place. 22, read it with me. But when a stronger than he, a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his sword. Simply put, when he comes upon him, he's stronger than he comes, he takes over his kingdom. Hallelujah. He takes over his kingdom. He drives him out. He takes over that domain. So any life that the devil is ruling over, when God comes in, in the name of Jesus, the devil is destroyed, defeated, and that life is saved. That life is redeemed. So as a redeemed of the Lord. You belong to the kingdom of God. 
The devil has no business in your life. And so you have to tell him so in the name of Jesus. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I want to pray. We have set some prayer points and we're going to pray now. Lift up your voices and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. You are so good. You are so loving. You are so kind. You're so beautiful. You're so wonderful. Thank you for translating me into this beautiful kingdom. In this kingdom where there is so much prosperity. In this kingdom where there is so much joy. In this kingdom where there is so much peace. In this kingdom of light. In this kingdom of God. Where Jesus rules over as the king of kings. And the Lord of lords. In this kingdom where I have been made a king, a priest unto God. Thank you, my father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my king. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voices now again and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for redeeming me by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for redeeming me by the blood of Jesus. Father God, let your kingdom reign over me in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for redeeming me by the blood of Jesus and for translating me into your kingdom, the kingdom of the Son of your Lord. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Now raise your voice and say, Heavenly Father, let your kingdom reign over me. Let your kingdom manifest in me and through me in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, let your kingdom reign over me and let your kingdom manifest in me and through me. Your kingdom reign over me. Let your kingdom manifest in me and through me and in every area of my life. Father, let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom manifest. Let your kingdom reign over me. Let your kingdom reign over my household. Let your kingdom reign over my wife. Let your kingdom reign over my children. Let your kingdom reign over my career. Let your kingdom, almighty God, reign over my business. Expand it. Expand it over my property. Whatever possession that I have, almighty God, I dedicate them all to you. Let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign. Let your kingdom reign over me, over my household. Father, let your kingdom reign over my business. Father, let your kingdom reign over my, my finances. Let your kingdom reign over my health. Father God, let your kingdom reign. Reign in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Expand that prayer. Expand that prayer. Everything that you have must be under the, uh, under the rulership, the authority, the power and influence of God. That is how the kingdom of God reigns over you, reigns over your business, reigns over your career. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Ooh, we're going to pray that prayer again. Say, Heavenly Father, the Almighty God, the Omnipotent God, in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom reign over me, over everything that connects with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to you. I surrender myself to Jesus, the King over the kingdom of God. And now I ask, let every power and kingdom that has been reigning over me that is not of God, that is not of you, let the power and the authority and the influence of that kingdom cease now in my life, be terminated now in my life. Let that power change hands. I change from that power, from that kingdom, into the kingdom of God that rules over me, that reigns over me. In the mighty name of Jesus, every power, every authority, every kingdom, every influence over my life that is not of God, that is not of Jesus, that is not of the Holy Spirit, be terminated now. Cease to function. Cease to function. Cease to reign. 
I reject you. I renounce you. I now know where I belong to. I belong to the kingdom of God. I am of the kingdom of God. I have no part with the devil. I have no part with darkness. I have no part with the agent of darkness. And therefore, every other kingdom that is not of God, operating in my life, operating in my family, operating in anything that concerns me, spiritually, physically, materially, socially, in any way at all. Right now, pack and get out. I command you cease in the name of Jesus. Cease to operate. Cease to function in my life. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I'm going to pray that prayer again. Say, Heavenly Father, Almighty God, the man of war, arise from your God and fight every battle of my life. In the name of Jesus, let every other power, every other authority, every other influence, and the kingdom that is not of God cease to function in my life and in my family, and in everything that concerns me. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and pray that prayer. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Go ahead and pray that prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. Thank you, almighty King. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, verse 17, you know the story of the madman of Gadara, or Gadarin, Gadarin. If you start from verse 5 all the way. But when you come to verse 8, just for the sake of time, you read, he said, for he said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit, come out of the man unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So you see, they took authority. They, they had, they, the kingdom of darkness was ruling over this man. But when a stronger than he comes, what does he do? He binds him and then he takes over that kingdom. Look at what happened, verse 10. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now, a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once, Jesus gave them permission. He gave them permission, permission <laughs> to run away because they can't stand. The stronger than he came and took over that domain, which was the life of that man of gathering. Verse 13, and at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000, and the head ran violently down a steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Of course, Jesus knew that it was they would perish. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. 15, the last verse. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Lift up your voices to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, every kingdom that has been ruling over my mind, every kingdom that has been ruling over the mind of my son, my daughter, my children, not, not letting them to do the things that God has created them to do, not letting me to do the things that God has created me to do, Oh, stronger than he, the one who is stronger than the devil, Jesus Christ, the one who has defeated the devil. Take over my life now and let every other kingdom be terminated over my life. Cease to function. Cease to function. Cease to function over my mind. Cease to function over my thought. Cease to function over my work. 
He's the function over my career. He's the function over my, 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 my business. In the mighty name of Jesus, go ahead and pray for yourself. You who has mental issues, right now you are delivered. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. Jesus is greater than that demon that has bent your mind. Jesus is greater than that demon that has possessed your body. In any way you are possessed, the stronger than he is here. Jesus is here. He is stronger than the devil. He is stronger than Satan. He is stronger than demons. In the name of Jesus, I cast out that demon. You use your own mouth and say, Satan. Has come and binds you and changes you and takes over my life. Right now, my life, I give to Jesus. Jesus, take over, take control, and let the kingdom of God rule over my life. So open your mind again and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom rule over my life. Let the kingdom of God rule over my life. Say, Father God, let your will be done in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I want you to go with me to Daniel chapter 2. You remember in Daniel chapter 2 is what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had a terrible dream. There are had a dream of the image that the head was gold and all that and all that five segments of that uh, image. And nobody could tell the dream nor give the interpretation. But Daniel was able to give the interpretation. So if we start from verse 43, you already are familiar with the story. Verse 43, as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men. But they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. If you don't understand this, go and read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the prophecy of the birth of Jesus. What does the Bible say there? For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Glory be to God. 45. So let's make the point clear. There are two dimensions here. This kingdom God establishes and breaks the kingdom of man at a point in time. There is Bible interpretation very clear around this kingdom, but let me just point you to this last bit of this kingdom. You know, in the past, there were world powers. You had empires where a single kingdom ruled over the entire earth. Today, you can now understand where we are. You cannot say a kingdom, an empire is ruling over the earth. This is the dispensation that we are in. The dispensation of that kingdom of iron mixed with clay and not adhering to one another. And so Jesus came. But well, let's read on, let's read on so we can pray. 45, in as much as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands 
and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this dream. After this, the dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. This stone that was caught without hand is Jesus Christ, who has established the kingdom of God, and that kingdom can never will, uh, be removed, but it abides forever. Glory be to God. And that's why Jesus said, we you pray, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Where? In the earth, as it has already been ordained in heaven. Lift up your voice and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, let that stone that was caught without hand, Jesus himself, break every kingdom of the world in pieces. Whatever kingdom is ruling over my life, let the stone that was caught without hand, Jesus Christ himself, break every other kingdom over my life in pieces, break in pieces. Every other kingdom, in the name of Jesus, the stone that was caught without hand, break in pieces. Break, I command you, break in pieces. Break in pieces, break in pieces. Whatever other kingdom, whatever other power is ruling, reigning in me, around me, anywhere I go, I command you, break in pieces. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You will corroborate this with Matthew chapter 21, verse 44. Matthew 21, verse 44. Matthew 21, 44. Jesus Christ himself was the one speaking here, so you may understand. It says, verse 43, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruit of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder, grind him to powder. Raise your voice again and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me Jesus. The stone that was caught without hand, Lord Jesus, fall upon every evil kingdom, every evil kingdom, every other power. And it's not God, it's not Jesus, it's not the Holy Spirit, it's not the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus, that stone that was caught without hand, fall and break in pieces, break in pieces. Every other kingdom, grind them to powder. Grind every other kingdom that is not of God to powder in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In that book of Daniel that we read, the wind of God blew and took the dust of this powder, blew it completely away. So raise your voice and say, Heavenly Father, let your mighty wind blow. Let your mighty wind blow as it blew upon the Red Sea and parted the Red Sea, as it blew upon the dust of the kingdom that were broken in pieces by the stone that was caught without hand. Let your wind blow, oh God, and blow every chaff out of my life. Wind of God, blow now upon me and blow every chaff, every chaff, every chaff, every chaff, every satanic deposit, whatever is not of God in my life. Wind of God, blow in the name of Jesus. Wind of God, blow, blow, and blow away every chaff, every dust, every uh, 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 debris, every deposit of the devil in any way, in any in any form, throw it away. And I command every deposit, satanic deposit, every tap in my life, the wind of God blow you and be buried in the sea, be buried in the ground, be buried anywhere. As it pleases the Lord, get out of my life, get out of my family, get out of my business. Get out of my household. Get out of my investment. In the mighty name of Jesus. Raise your voice again and say, Lord Jesus, you are the stronger than he. You are stronger than the devil. You are stronger than all kingdoms of the earth. Rule and reign over me. I confess that you are the kingdom that rules over me. I submit myself to God. I submit myself to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I ask Almighty God, rule over me. Lord Jesus, reign over me. 
Heavenly Father, reign over me. Lord Jesus, reign over me. And let your kingdom reign over me. Let your kingdom manifest unto me. Manifest in my life. Let the prosperity of your kingdom overtake me. Let the peace of your kingdom overtake me. Go ahead and pray. Let the favor of your kingdom overtake me. Let the joy of your kingdom overtake me. Let all the blessings of the kingdom of God overtake me now. Manifest in my life. I belong to the kingdom of God. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I have been translated into the kingdom of God, the domain where God reigns, where Jesus rules as the king and of the kingdom of God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, from today, right now, let your kingdom, your kingdom alone, rule, reign over me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray your prayer. Just go ahead, pray your prayer. So bring everything, whatever you have, you have desired in your heart, bring before God, bring before him, bring before him. For you, who was sick, I want to put it that way, because right now the kingdom of God has taken over your life. Like the mute began to speak, I decree in the name of Jesus and by the kingdom of God that rules over you. In the name of Jesus, you are healed, you are well, every symptom go. In the name of Jesus, you have been delivered, you have, he you have been healed. In the name of Jesus, just go ahead and tell him, Lord, let your kingdom reign over me and let your kingdom manifest. And anything specific, just ask the kingdom of God to rule and reign there. Just that's the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. <laughs> oh, thank God, thank God for God. I believe you understand that prayer more deeper. I mean, more deeply today, more in a deeper dimension, rather in a deeper dimension and more deeply today. Let your kingdom come, O oh God, and let your will be done. And Jesus said, the kingdom of God come upon you. And after Jesus died, rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. And God sent his Holy Spirit to dwell with us. Continually, the Holy Spirit dwells with us. God abides with us. That's why his name is called Emmanuel. God with us. Go ahead and thank him. Tell him, Father, thank you for your kingdom that has taken over my life, that rules over my life. Thank you for the manifestation. I belong to the kingdom of God, the, the riches, the prosperity of the kingdom of God is my portion. Let them manifest right now. Heavenly Father, quicken me by your spirit, O oh God Almighty. Henceforth, to live by the dictates of the kingdom of God, and never, 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 never to subject myself to any other kingdom. Thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Finally, tell him, Almighty God, as you rule and reign over me, let my life please you. Let my life glorify you. Father, let this life please you and glorify you. That your kingdom that reigns over me here on earth, and as I exercise, continue to exercise the authority you have given to me to reign in your kingdom here on earth, I will come to be with you in that eternal glory. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. To you, Almighty God, be all glory, all honor, all power, all majesty. Let your kingdom, Almighty God, reign forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.